gonna work. Is it gonna work? It'd be really neat if it worked, but I don't think it will. I'm struggling with an internet connection. I am just outside of Yellowstone Park here in Wyoming. Hi, Jack Taylor. Uh, we'll see if it works. We'll see if it works. Um, stranded right now about a mile from the entrance to Yellowstone National Park. Uh, just finishing up. Oh, we're getting some people hopping on. Uh, been on an epic ride across the country from uh, Chicago to headed towards Montana. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> Had so many great moments where I'm ri and I'm riding my scooter. I own a Suzuki Bergman 400, and I was loving life and thinking I was on top of the world, despite battling a little wind through Illinois and Iowa when I started out, full of energy and vigor. Nebraska got long, but still was nice and pretty and towns. But when I left Nebraska, the temperature turned and the uh, environment turned as I headed into Wyoming. And let me tell you, Wyoming is the most desolate state I've ever been in. You, there would not be no people, no towns, no homes, no cars, uh, just vast lands, vast lands, uh, with huge, huge, huge ranches on them. And I'm riding across the state, getting knocked around by the wind, Scared, temperature was dropping, it was cold and wet. Uh, my first day or so riding through Wyoming, I said, Wow, that was heck. And I spent the night last night in uh, Cody, uh, uh, Wyoming, and had a uh, three or four hour ride up to Montana where I was headed today. And I left at 5 22 this morning and got on the road. Uh, it was dark out. It was windy, it was cold, it was like 42 degrees, said my scooter at that time. Started riding into the mountains and uh, the temperature dropped, the wind picked up and the cold picked up. As I'm passing between mountains, uh, uh, fog, what I thought was fog came in, but it wasn't fog, I think they were clouds. And those clouds carried snow and the snow started falling and the temperature fell right along with it. And I'm riding my two-wheel scooter. Roads are wet, temperature dropping. It was at 42 when I pulled into the uh, mountain area. Uh, 41, 40, 39, 38. I'm going, holy crap, I hope this doesn't go below freezing. <laughs> 37, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it turned out it was uh, 24 degrees. My hands were frozen. Uh, riding on this slowly through the mountains. Uh, I'll show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see it out there. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can sit down. Uh, it's not gathering on the roads, but it's cold. I got greedy. Uh, my internet connection paused. Are you still there? Are you still there? Yeah, it's beautiful, Jack, but it was hard to enjoy the beauty when I was really terrified. I was really terrified. Um, but anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. <laughs> My name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. It's Thursday morning. It is 1022 Mountain Standard Time, and uh, it is May 24th. <laughs> I say with a question mark. Happy Thursday. It's a little show I've been doing a while. It's a show about me talking. It is a show about me. I'm trying to get the waiter to bring me more coffee. Uh, a uh, show about me sharing some feelings, sharing some ups and downs in life, sharing some of the struggles we go through. And over the last four or five days, is there a way? Do you have more coffee, sir? If I could have a topper, I would love you all day. Not that that's the best offer you've ever had. Awesome. Hold on one second. I got to get into my coffee. I have a podcast I'm doing, and I need my coffee for it. Thank you so much. Um, again, this is a show about me uh, 
talking and sharing some of the struggles and challenges we face. And over the last five years, I started doing coffee with Ken because I was hurting and I was struggling with my own image and missing the woman of my dreams and living in a dark apartment and uh, hurting in a lot of ways. And coffee with Ken's kind of a journey of me uh, kind of giving you the play by play day by day. And about six weeks ago, I was offered a job, a seasonal job for five months in a beautiful area in the Rocky Mountains. And I was headed that way from Chicago, uh, riding on uh, my Suzuki Bergman 400. Had never driven at 60 miles before. I'm afraid of speed and I'm afraid of heights. And let me tell you, when you're riding through the mountains, you have both speed and heights uh, 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 frightening the heck out of you. And anyway, I left Cody where I stayed last night at 522 this morning. I headed into the mountains towards Yellowstone uh, where I was going to cross through and then head into Montana. Uh, the temperature kept dropping. I was wearing my gloves that I'd had on the whole journey. And my fingers started completely losing feeling. I was worried. I'm going, how am I going to wait tables if I lose my fingers? And uh, what if I slip and crash? And cars were coming by every 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And I'm alone on this, in the mountains with the snow coming down and uh, windy and wet roads and temperature dropping. And I was terrified. I tell you what, death is a real possibility when you are in the mountains. And I think if you're in a car... You obviously have some shelter, so you're sort of protected. Even if the car breaks down or you're, I don't know, run out of gas, you can still bundle up or hug with your loved ones or operate your phone if your phone's working uh, from your car. But when you're riding a scooter, you're really, you know, not only is there a risk of crashing, of course, but there was a sign up along the way said, hey, uh, watch out for bears. They come out even onto the highway. And so go slow. And I think they were concerned about the bear's well-being. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, and it's 30 degrees, and it's snowing, and my hands, fingers feel like they're falling off. And I'm thinking, I don't even know if, if the bear attacks me or not. If I hit it, I'm a dead man. To hell with the bear. He'll go off into the woods and probably be fine. But I'm not going to make it through that. So I was scared for so many reasons. And uh, uh, about two, back, two miles back down the way, my fingers couldn't take it anymore. I stopped the car. I said, don't panic. What should I do? I should get another pair of gloves on. Squeezed a second pair of gloves on. Got back on the bike, was riding, and came across this heavenly oasis, which is about a mile from the Yellowstone Gate. And uh, I looked. There was a car out front, but I couldn't tell if it was open or not. And my fingers were hurting, and my body was chilled to the bones. And I opened the door, and I said, thank you, God, and walked in. And I said, I don't even know what's happening, but I'm going to make it. Not make it to my destination in time. Not, I didn't even know what make it meant, except make it meant survive the day. And sometimes (laughs) that's all you can do. I'll tell you what, uh, 10, 20 miles back, I didn't know if I should turn, I couldn't turn around because I've already driven an hour and a half. I couldn't stop, I would have froze to death. So all I could do was keep going. And fortunately for me, uh, this restaurant, gift shop, little tiny hotel was here uh, right along this barren stretch of road. And I pulled in, I had breakfast, I ordered coffee, and uh, I don't know, at least I'm safe. (laughs) I tell you what, it is scary. Uh, I want to talk about it a little bit before I do. My hope is I want to take a sip of coffee. I hope wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, you've got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Mm. Drinking it black. Mm. I talked a lot about how cool of an adventure this was. I'm glad God pushed me to do this and made me do it and put me in a situation where I didn't feel I had a choice. Um... But I don't think (laughs) it'll be great to tell stories, but I don't think 
I could do it again. I mean, I might drive back, ride back, but that'll be under different circumstances. Yesterday, I thought I was on top of the world. I was ahead of schedule. Uh, Kendall's having a cup of coffee with me. Thanks, RJ. Uh, I felt like I was on top of the world. I found this cute little town called Ten Sleep in Wyoming. I was taking pictures. I was talking to locals. I was FaceTiming my brother, saying how cool of a little cute town and how fun of my ride is. What I didn't know at that point, I'd already gone 40 miles in the wrong direction, and I was about to go 25 more miles in the wrong direction into the mountains. I was looking for signs for the city I was heading for. There were no signs. The snow was starting to come down. I pulled over and a guy told me I was going the wrong way. And when you're on a scooter in the mountains and you've gone 65 miles the wrong way, oh, I cannot tell you what a horrible... Ten hours of time, and suddenly my ride went from a joy ride to a survival ride. Made it to Cody last night, and uh, uh, got five or six hours of sleep, and left early this morning to go on this journey, trying to get it to Montana, trying to get to Montana, which was 131 miles away. Uh, but little did I know the weather that was waiting for me, the cold, the wind, the snow, the wet roads, and eventually uh, the roads being shut down in Yellowstone. Uh, I don't know what my message is for you today. I usually try and have a little bit of inspiration or a little bit of positivity spun in. Other than thank God I'm here and thank God for this coffee and uh, my scooter, which continues to be a little reliable, uh, amazingly functional machine, uh, I was terrified out there. I was terrified out there. You know, you, you, your wheels slip out and you crash. That's not good. Uh, but even stopping didn't feel like an option and I didn't know what to do. So I've sat here during the breakfast shift. Apparently they're open till 8.30 tonight. I might keep getting refills. <laughs> uh, just kind of kidding. But if the snow stops and the roads dry, I might do the final 80-mile trek to where I'm supposed to go in Montana and uh, see if I can get checked in on time. Uh, if not, I might get a room here. Weather to Either way... Um, my day is uncertain, and uh, I guess life is uncertain, and tomorrow's never promised, and uh, I'm just lucky to be here warm, uh, have my two cold coats off, and my freezing gloves, and my helmet, I think, in the gift shop. I hope they don't sell it, uh, and now I get to sit outside and look at the snowfall from the safety of this table and with a warm cup of coffee in my hand. Um, again, usually I try to have something inspirational for you. I don't know that I do today. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, the tears were shedding or were coming out this morning. I worked really hard uh, to get here and to fall short, 80 miles short of my destination, especially after going 130 miles out of the way yesterday, really was a gut punch uh, for me. Uh, but I'm trying to smile and uh, uh, trying to uh, have as good of attitude as I can about it while still not knowing what I'm going to do today except sit here, stare out the window and uh, hope uh, the snow stops and the sun comes out but that might be a fantasy land Dan Redwine wants to know what my favorite book is as far as like motivational self-help books I think Compound Effect is my favorite. It's about the power of habits over time and how little things over time make a huge difference in your life. I don't think me of five or 10 years ago could have handled going 65 miles out of the way or dealt with the snow with any sort of composure uh, like I have the last 24 hours. Uh, I found some things to be grateful for, but let me tell you, it's okay to struggle. 
Uh, and it's okay to feel sadness and anger and frustration and annoyance at the whole state of Wyoming as it was cold and wet and has me <laughs> stranded. And I felt all those things. But I think if you fight the feelings, they uh, fester inside you. Uh, and it's okay to hurt and it's okay to struggle and it's okay to be sad or scared or whatever. Uh, but I think acknowledging them is the first step to getting through them. And... Uh, I'll tell you what, I was frustrated. <laughs> I was facing despair and facing fear and facing what it felt like to me, <laughs> certain death. Uh, uh, but God did not want to take me yet, at least not this morning. <laughs> Still at a restaurant on the side of the road in the Rocky Mountains in Wyoming. Not to my destination and can't go back to where I was. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, somebody asked me a question. What they ask me? Uh, not what was my favorite book, but uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I missed the question. I missed the question. But anyway, uh, I so appreciate you for hopping on. I do. Again, I tried to go live earlier today. Uh, I can't make a phone call. I can barely send a text. Uh, fortunately, they have Wi-Fi here. Oh, when was my check-in? My check-in was uh, 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, so 34 minutes ago. I had uh, my And she said, oh, no problem. If he can check in by 2 today, that'd be great. And she said, well, what if he can't? He's on a motorcycle. And they go, oh, well, we'll accommodate. We'll let him in uh, tomorrow so I'm hoping the snow stops and I get a couple hours of sunlight. I can deal with the cold, uh, but I can't deal with cold and snow uh, on two wheels in the mountains. <laughs> and uh, I, it's funny, somebody asked, what did the boss say? This is a big company that organizes uh, a lot of hotels in the area. I've never talked to the boss and uh, I was just contacting, or I wasn't, my ex-wife was contacting the HR department. And uh, uh, they said it'd be okay if I checked in tomorrow, apparently. So keeping my fingers crossed that the snow stops either in the next couple hours or sometime between now and tomorrow, that there's still a room available for me and that they got plenty of coffee brewing because um, I'm going to need it today. Don't know what you do around here. The restaurant is empty. It was fairly filled when I pulled in. Uh, really doubting God's existence on my ride. And I was praying while doing it. In the back of my mind, I'm going, am I a man? And I said, hey, sorry about my lack of faith. peace. Uh, yeah, I know we're getting in and out. The Wi-Fi is bad. Again, I'm in the middle of the mountains in the Rockies, so that happens, I guess. But uh, anyway, I'm going to sign off now. I just wanted to go live and see how it went. I appreciate you so much for hopping in. Uh, I'm hoping to get back on the road and get back into uh, uh, get to Montana at some point. Uh, today, if possible. Tomorrow, if not. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I'm going to keep looking for things I'm grateful for. I'm going to try and smile as best I can and have a good attitude uh, despite my fears and worries and anxieties and frustrations. Because, uh, again, our good attitude can propel us forward. And a bad attitude is only going to keep us down. Hope you had a great night's sleep. Hope you're staying warm and dry wherever you are. And uh, hope you're feeling good, loving yourself, forgiving yourself. And as always, uh, hope to talk.